Welcome back friends, Dan Vega here. And today we are gonna take a look at customizing your Spring Security login form. Now in a previous video, which I will leave in the description below and somewhere I think up here, uh, we took a look at installing or using Tailwind CSS in your Spring Boot and Timeleaf applications. That is because you can use a CDN, but you ultimately don't wanna use that as you go to production. So you need to introduce a build process. So if you're interested in that setup, I will leave a link for that. But I did that because we're gonna build on that. We're gonna use that in today's tutorial. Now, don't worry if you're not a fan of Tailwind or don't wanna use Tailwind, you can use whatever CSS framework or vanilla CSS that you want to use to customize the login form in Spring Boot and Timeleaf. And, and again, this isn't really specific to Timeleaf. This just happens to be the template processor that I'm using today. The thing I want to get across is you don't need any of this to do this. You can simply create a new template. You can tell Spring Security when we go ahead and set it up that, hey, this is my custom login form, this is what I wanna use. Now, there are kind of two approaches to this, right? One, within a Spring Boot application. So we're in a Spring Boot app, we're using Timeleaf, we have a template that we are controlling, let's customize that. And then there is, hey, let me create a custom form outside of Spring, maybe in like a Vue or an Angular or React template, right? So we're not gonna do the latter in this one. We'll get to that uh, soon. Uh, I'm putting together some thoughts on that. But right now we're gonna talk about just kind of customizing the login form in our Spring Boot application with Spring Security, of course. So uh, with that, I have a couple of resources to share with you. First is this GitHub repo, Spring Security login form. This has a whole bunch of instructions in here on how to do what we're gonna do today. I'm not gonna show you all of it because we're going to walk through that. Uh, along with the code that we're going to talk through. So I will leave this in the description below as well. So with that, let's create a new project. Uh, we go over to start.spring.io. I'm gonna pick Java Maven, the latest version of Spring Boot. We'll say this is dev.danvega. I need to create a artifact, I'll say login, and I'm just going to leave this there. And then I'm gonna go ahead and choose some dependencies. The dependencies that I want are going to be web, we need Timeleaf, we need DevTools, and we need Spring Security. So that looks good. That looks like everything we need. Uh, with that, what we can do is go ahead and click the Generate button. This will download a zip. You can open up in your favorite ID or text editor, whatever you're most productive in. I'm gonna open this up in IntelliJ Ultimate Edition because that is my favorite ID. I love that ID, it's so good. Um, but with that, Let's go ahead and write some code, friends. All right, so I have the project opened up in IntelliJ here. Now, I went ahead and did a couple things. I did all the things that we did in the last video just to get Tailwind involved. If you're not using Tailwind or you don't even want to do that step, you could just drop a CDN in. I mentioned that uh, in the GitHub repo for the previous tutorial. So if you want to use Tailwind, there's an easy way to do it. This is kind of the better way to do it if you want to make sure that you have a nice... Uh, light version of the CSS uh, styles along with uh, you can minify it so you can get a nice version of that instead of shipping all the styles to production. So uh, I went ahead and did that. Uh, if you want to go ahead and do that, go for it. Um, easiest thing, just drop a CDN if you want to follow along. Okay, so with that in place, I think we could start, um, I'm going to create, let's start with a home, like let's just create a, a route to a template and that template will be what we're kind of locking down. Um, so let's go ahead and create a controller. I'm going to create a home controller and this is going to be an at controller because we're going to use a template for this. And all I'm going to return from here is a string called home. And this is going to map to our index template. So we'll use a git mapping for this. And uh, that root now maps to the index template. So we can put the index template in here. We'll say index.html. And we are going to pull this from the readme uh, that, I, that I kind of pointed to in the beginning. And again, this is just a file to say homepage. Uh, it's gonna take advantage of our Tailwind CSS files. Um, and then it's gonna go ahead and just have this uh, homepage banner on there. Now, I did not run this. So let's cd into source main front end, right? And we wanna do npm run watch so that our styles are picked up. Uh, we need to install those first. 
npm run watch. Okay, um, building, and we should be good to go on the Tailwind stuff. So now, um, I think what's going to happen is everything is locked down by default, right? With Spring Security, uh, that's a good approach, right? Like, we want to make sure everything is secure. So uh, if we go to anything right now, uh, we're going to get this login. So let's say, let's go back to the browser, localhost 8080. And now we have this login form. So this is the login form that comes built in with uh, Spring Security. Uh, this is what we're gonna be overriding, but if we go ahead and do user and that password, did I enter the wrong one? Let's see this again, user, password, and there's our homepage that we just created. So we know Spring Security is working. We know we get that default template out of the box. We know we're able to get to our homepage first. This is all good. Um, again, I love this approach with Spring Security. Everything's kind of locked down by default. This is great for out of the box, but as soon as we start wanting to do anything, we're probably gonna wanna provide our own security. So to do that, we are going to need to create a configuration class where we can override some of that security. So I'm gonna create something called security config. This is going to be a configure configuration class. And here we're gonna to want to do a couple of things. I want to um, basically set up our security configuration, and then I want to add a custom user just for the heck of it so I have a user and not that auto-generated password every single time, right? So um, how do we do that? So first we're gonna create a bean, and this bean is of type security, security, filter chain, we'll call this security filter chain. This is going to uh, take in an argument of type HTTP, HTTP security, call this HTTP, and what we'll end up doing is just returning that. This will throw an exception and we are off and running. So the first thing we wanna do is we wanna kind of set up the configuration for matching routes, what's allowed, what's not, et cetera. Uh, again, we kind of want to mimic uh, Spring Security. We want to lock everything down. So authorize uh, HTTP requests. This will take in auth and auth. So here we go. And what I want to do is first set the request matchers. One of the things I want to allow is this main.css. So I want to go ahead and say main.css is allowed. And basically everything else uh, any request I want to make sure is authenticated. Again, sticking with those spring security principles that everything should be a lockdown and only the things we want to allow, we are allowing. Now here's where we get to customize spring security. Here we're going to say form login. So we say form, oops, and form, and then we can set the uh, login page. So we can say login page is going to be slash login. Now you can do this whatever you want, you know, custom login. Uh, I'll just keep it at login for now. Um, and then we also want to say, go ahead and permit all because we want to allow this form. Uh, we're not allowing up here, but we're saying, hey, go ahead and allow these. These are permitted resources. So with that, uh, we should have our custom Spring Security. Uh, next, I'm gonna add a quick user. So I have a user. So again, I'll create a new bean uh, of type user details, user details service, user details service. And uh, we're just creating an in-memory user. Now I know I catch some slack in the comments for this all the time that I'm not doing a real, or I'm not creating a real user in this system that's in a database somewhere. And I get that, but this isn't the point of this video. Uh, an in-memory user trying to explain uh, what we're trying to get across in this video is just fine. So I'm gonna say var user is equal to uh, user dot with username. So I'll give it a username of Dan. We'll say dot uh, password. Uh, we're gonna use uh, no encoding here. So I'll say nope, uh, no op, pa whoops. Uh, 
So now I have a password of password, real secure Dan, and we're going to build that and then just return a new in memory, in memory user details manager and pass our user in. Cool. So now we have a user and some custom spring security. So now what we need to do is we need a, first we need a controller for this. I'm just gonna use this home controller. Um, but what I wanna do is basically set up like, hey, when we go to login slash login, uh, what template, template are we using? So I'll say public string login. We are going to return the login.html, right? So let's create one in here. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and say login.html. And I wanna take a little bit of a side tangent just for a second here. Let's head over to the browser. So I'm a big fan of Tailwind. I'm a big fan of this Tailwind UI. I purchased this. I know it's a little bit of money and I'm not asking you to, but this is where I'm getting the component from today. There are free variations of this all over. There are a bunch of different services that offer something similar to this. I just happen to love this one because this is from the uh, creators of Tailwind. So if you go down and look at sign in and registration, this is the one we're gonna use. In fact, this one might be free. I'm not, I'm logged in, so I can't tell, but may, some of the first ones on these components are free. So check it out. Maybe you can just copy that code for free. If not, you can grab the template from the GitHub repo. I think that's perfectly acceptable under the terms and conditions of Tailwind UI. I'm not giving you every single component, um, but what I wanna show you here is that like, hey, there's a bunch of signing forms based on what you might wanna do. And these all look real nice. And oh, this is really nice. Like if I wanted to use uh, OAuth 2 and Spring Security's baked in support for that, uh, this would be uh, really cool. So lots of nice sign-in forms here. There are other services that can do this. Uh, but with that, I've created one for you. Uh, so you can grab this from the uh, GitHub repo. And we'll go ahead and look at this. So this is a custom login page. It is pointing to main.css in our static folder. That is the basically the build process to only use the Tailwind uh, styles that are in there. And it probably went ahead and built again. Yeah, so you see it rebuilding every time uh, that templates directory changes. So we have uh, a way to like display some errors uh, if they're logged out. And then there's just a form that post to slash login. And uh, all I had to do is make sure I was using the same uh, names and parameters that the that the built-in form was using. So um, I, I, I went ahead and used those same names. There's a, actually an example of this in the Spring Security Docs, and that's where I got those from. But that's all you have to change. You don't have to change the back-end uh, implementation of what that is going to look like, how that handles those form items. All we're doing is customizing the look and feel. We're not overriding like the logic there. So that is a good thing. So with this in place, um, I should be able to restart this application. Let's head over to our um, login page or our home, which should be locked down. All right, let's go ahead and clear these out. And let me rerun this. And now we get our sign-in form. So now this is using that custom sign-in form that we created and it looks great. So this is, again, anytime we kind of add Spring Security to it, we get some defaults, which is really great. But at some point we're gonna have to like customize a lot of this stuff. So we have to write custom security. We did that using that configuration class. We'll have to create custom users in the system. We'll have to create custom login forms. And again, uh, some of the ones we looked at, uh, at least on the Tailwind UI side, give us that login form, give us kind of the OAuth credentials, like, hey, I want to sign in with Google or sign in with Twitter or X or whatever we're calling it these days. Um, so this is really great. This is an easy way to do it. Spring Security gives us this ability out of the box, which is which is awesome. So, hey, uh, I hope you learned something here today. Uh, if you did, you know the deal, friends. Do me a big favor. Please go ahead and leave me a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel. And as always, happy coding.